Hello everyone. Got a uh, an idea to share with you guys, uh, something that I've been, well, I'm really just starting to look into at the moment because I've, I've been kind of scratching my head um, around what to do when I'm playing with the black pieces and I face one D4. So, I mean, let me flip the board. In the past, um, I've played some Dutch systems. You could do classical Dutch. You could do um, Leningrad Dutch. We've tried that. Um, I've been playing with Knight F6, and you know, then if uh, then the the Benoni, and possibly the Benko Gambit as well. That's the idea with the Benko. Um, but I haven't really found anything that is that feels comfortable. Plus you get an awful lot, at, at, at this level, you get an awful lot of people who don't play this move, okay? If you look, this is my, um, on my database, yes, C4 has been played quite a lot, but there's an awful lot of this. Awful lot of London style, okay? So what do you do against the London? And the thing is, I've played... I mean, I, I, I used the London, I played the London myself as white, um, and it got me, you know, from 1,000 to 1,300 or so. Um, and then I switched to playing E4 openings because it's more fun. Um, but, you know, the London's solid. But the thing is that a lot of beginners come across the London system and really latch onto it because it's so bloody easy to play, right? You, you knock out the same first seven or eight moves. A lot of the time, I mean, that can lead to beginner players getting caught out. Um, but you are going to face this a lot. So let's see, when I've been black, okay. Um, so d4, let's say knight f6, okay, which is my idea that I'm sharing with you. It's based on this. Um, I have seen, hang on. Let's do this again. My game's is black. I play the knight out. Sometimes it goes a bit kooky, this. Yeah, so the, yeah, a lot of c4s. A lot of c4s, but probably more recently. Um, and bishop f4, 83 times out of... How many times have I played knight f6? 287. Okay. So you're getting on to, you know, third of the time you will see bishop f4. Nearer half the time, maybe 40%, you'll, you'll get c4. But... So what do you do against the London? I mean, what do you do against the London? So this is what I was I was looking into. And um, the move that I've come across, which is quite interesting, is C5 now. And the chess.com just says Indian game. It's like, okay, this is move two. Um, this is a gambit of some kind. But I don't know if it's got a name. If you know that it's got a name, please let me know. Okay, and you're tempting white to capture here. So it's a bit like a Sicilian, right? Um, but like the wrong way around. You know, well, if, if white had played e4, then this would be a Sicilian. But we're playing this against d4. So it's a kind of anti-London. Now, so let's see, because I've played... Let's go back to the start in the Explorer, okay? We'll switch to My Games as White, right? How many times has this been played against me when I've played the London? Because i played the London a lot, right? How many times have I played D4? 1,800 times, yeah? And then I've since gone on to play a lot more E4. No, three times as much E4. But this, okay, let's say Knight comes out and Bishop F4, I've played 162 times, right? And interestingly, I've got a losing track record in that, okay? Knight c3, I've had much more success with. Okay, but anyway, so knight, uh, bishop out here, we are going to London, right? And now, of it, d5 has been played heaps, okay? e6 has been played 57 times. g6 has been played, right? So we're going into like a King's Indian defense there, yeah? So most popular, Second most popular, third most popular, 
Um, then d6 is the fourth most popular, right? Then knight c6, fifth. And finally, c5 has been played against me eight times only. Eight times, okay? Out of 162. So that's one in 20 at the time in the, like, 1000 to 1500 range, one in 20 times you'll, people will see this. So that means that London players don't see this a lot. Now, um, <clears throat> let's go over to the analysis board. Okay, so let's say we're black and I've got this set to not too deep, depth 20. I had it set much higher yesterday because I was watching along with the, uh, the World Championship match and I was sticking it into stockfish on the maximum setting and seeing what stockfish was saying kind of fascinating but i didn't learn anything okay so let's say they play the london all right now what does the computer say computer says d5 g6 e6 okay so d5 g6 yeah king's indian e6 all right all normal okay but what about c5 c5 it says it slightly prefers White, but we're talking point two, point two. That's that's all. Now white starts with that much of a, an advantage anyway. So this is really interesting and it's surprising. And it's that's two boxes ticked, right? A, it's going to surprise London players because they're not going to know what to do, right? They want to go. They want to do this, yeah, or or this, or that, or that. You know, they know exactly what their setup is going to be, and this just pokes it right in the, in the in the arse and say, don't poke my London in the arse. So they don't know what to do, right? How many times are they going to take? You know, if they take, that says 0.24. Okay, so it's kind of okay. Now, but then if they take, look at that. Queen a5 check, right? And you have check and a fork on the pawn. So it's going to give them cause, pause for thought already. Now, let's go on to Lee Chess. Now, great thing about Lee Chess's um, opening explorer is that whereas chess.com only tells you your games and master games, so title players, right? Lee Chess will, t will give you um, a much better range, okay? So it will go from average rating 1600, 1800, 2000, 2225, okay? Now, if I just have it set to 1600, okay? And then I want to flip, oh, I don't have to flip the board, okay? So let's say, you know, with d4, okay? And it gives you the win and loss and draw percentages at, at the average 1600 level, which is really cool. And it's got millions of games on it, which is really cool. Okay, now, so d5 is the most common response and that's better for white at 52%, but it's boring. Okay, we're interested in knight f6, which is actually the second most popular, with one and a half million games. And that actually works out even, so it's 48% each. Interesting, okay. And now, obviously, yeah, c4, like we've seen, is the most popular, but boring old bishop f4, oh no, it's London time, right, is the second most popular. So let's put that one in. Now, look at this, um, g6, King's Indian defense, slightly better for black. D5, um, just quite normal response, slightly better for white, 50 against 46. E6, we've got 50, 46 again, boring, boring, boring. D6, even more boring, 48, 48 again, very dull. C5 though, check this out. 10,000 games, like 10,700 games played on Lee Chess, right? Average 1600 rating, 53% win rate for black against 43 for white. Interesting, right? And you can do this, you know, you go on Lee Chess, it's free. You don't even, I'm not even logged in, right? Oh, I am, but you don't even have to be. So with this, and there's an awful lot of ways then for white to go wrong. So the most common response apparently is E3. Still better for black. All of this is better for black. Whatever white does, on average, it's better for black, you know? So, how didn't I know about this move? 
And how come it hasn't got a name, as far as we know, right? Um, so e3 is good. So let's look at things like all right, knight c3. Knight c3 has been played uh, how many times? 300 times. 61% win rate for black. Bishop takes b8. Well, that, that's kind of winning for black as well. You know, and, and you can use this. Use this to build up your um, kind of repertoire. So anyway, let me show you... Um, okay, so here's the game when I just tried this out for the first time. Now, I screwed up this game. Okay, um, it's 55 moves. I won't take you through the whole thing. But this is an example. And here my opponent's rated 1466. So he's not a Muppet. Okay, so d4. Knight f6. Okay, and this is a nice flexible move. You know, we can go into the King's Indian. You know, we can play any of these if we want to. All right? Very flexible. Opponent does this. Now, of course, if, if your opponent plays pawn here, right, then you've, you've got the option of going Benoni, you know, as well. But anyway, so he doesn't do that. He plays bishop out here, and I go c5. I've actually played this three times ever, apparently, according to chess.com. One win, one loss, one draw. This is the draw. Okay. Now, and this is a 15 plus 10 game, okay? So he's, he's used three seconds to blitz out his first two moves, and then he goes, he spends a whole minute... On the next one, minute 16, he doesn't know what to do. This is good. This is what I like. Okay. Now, so he plays his knight out, right? So I capture. And knight captures. And here, I make a mistake. Right? Can you see the mistake that I made? I mean, I, I, I developed my knight to c6. Okay. And he took and b took. And I get a nice prompt. Well, well, we'll rewind in a minute. Let me just show you how the opening goes. So now he does this. And now I'm thinking, you know, Benko Gambit ideas maybe um, prevent him from castling, okay? So, um, so I carry on with the idea of, because now that he's brought out his dark square bishop and blocked it off, this pawn on b2 is weak. So I'm thinking Fianchetto, right? I think this bishop should be called Figaro, don't you? Definitely. Fianchetto Figaro, as per the song. Yeah? So, the, the C bishop also needs a needs a name as well. If pawns have got names, I think the pieces should, should have names as well. The king's bishop is Figaro from here on in. Okay. So, white plays bishop in front of the king, and now I come out. And this, this is one of the beauties of, of moving Charlie the Sea Pawn. Yeah, early on, you get these wild queen ideas, right? You can go full Nelson on his ass. Okay, so come out with check. He blocks. Now I Fianchetto Figaro. Yeah, and still with ideas of this, his pawn is still undefended. He now develops his knight. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm also thinking ideas of this. My knight can come in, you know, and then. Maybe what about capturing this pawn? And if pawn takes, we've got like bishop takes, stuff like that. All interesting ideas. Now I bring my bishop out, and if bishop takes bishop and then queen takes, he can't castle. So he brings his knight out here. You know? So he's he's you can see this guy's a London player. And I've taken him to Timbuktu. It's great, you know? Um so if you look at the analysis, well. Let's, we'll go back to the start and I'll show you this mistake, okay? So I do this, right? I take, because he do not know what to do. He's like, we're not in London anymore, right? Goes here. Now, what I should have done is E5. And you're like, Hunty, have you gone mad? Yes, I know it's a pawn fork, you jelly brain, but Bishop takes pawn. And I'm like, yeah, but, huh. Nice, eh? Nice. You know? Check. Winning some stuff. Yeah? So, I mean, interesting stuff. So here, let me just show you my notes. Okay. Um, so I'm putting together a, no a repertoire for, you know, against D4. Right? So that's the title of it. That's the opening moves. And then if C4... So let's, we're kind of... 
I'll just map this out a little bit on here, okay? So, uh, as black, right, against e4, I'm going to play knight f6, okay? That's this. So, if he then goes ahead with, with c4, which is um, the most common, okay, um, then I'm going to play e5. And that's already getting us into um, interesting territory. Now, if he takes... Now, this is calling it the Budapest Gambit, but there's actually a couple of approaches. This is the Budapest Gambit. Um, yep, here. And there's lots of fun to be had down that particular path, right? Um, but this one is the uh, Fajarovic Gambit, right? Um, Mio, the butcher, has got a, a very in-depth video on that that I'm starting to work through. And what I'm trying to do now with my notes, if you look at this, is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, you know, instead of just um, writing down what I should play, I'm trying to write a note on each one for why, you know, as well. And I can work through this and work through my own notes and try and understand each position better because I think when you understand it you're going to recall it better anyway so and then we've you know we've got declined lines for this so if he doesn't take there if he pushes d5 you know that's a mistake bishop c5 stuff like that right so I, I know what I'm doing um, so that's all that now but if he plays London style right I you know I need to know how to deal with a Trompowski if he, if he plays the bishop to here for example, so this is this is my anti-London, okay? So I've got a, and this is all I've got for that right now, but you know, what I need to do is I'm gonna start building this up and I'm gonna go get me some London scalps. So um, that's it really, that's, that's all I've got to share today. Um, yeah, I really should have gone on to, to win that game, but I didn't, ended in a draw. I had two pawn advantage and just screwed it up which is unforgivable, but, you know, important thing is to learn. In fact, let us briefly, I'm going to re refresh this, let me show you the ending because, right, here's where I buggered it up, okay? My opponent's got 1 minute 16, but we have an increment, okay? So we end up in this situation where I can't push my pawn, he'll just take, if my king takes... His king gets in here. Um, so we end up in this kind of situation, right? So he's got one, two, three, four pawns, okay? I've got a five and a runaway Charlie, right? So this absolutely ought to be winning, right? Charlie gets the C2, okay? Rook blocks, obviously, has to be done. Now my king comes in and now his king is going to come in as a second attacker against Charlie, yeah? So my king's creeping up, he takes, I take, he takes, right? Now, I've got an extra Dave, right? So obviously I move my king up here. Now, I now bugger up. All I need to do is convert this pawn to win the game, right? And he's got to stop it. And his, his pawns can't advance. You know, this one comes forward, I take it. This one comes forward, I take it. This one comes forward, I take that, you know. His pawns are stuck, right? And we end up doing this. So I play d5. His king goes there, right? I push a pawn because I'm in Kanda Zugzwang here. I can't go there because of the pawn. I can't go there, I can't go there, right? I can't go there. So all my king can do is retreat, yeah? So I end up pushing a pawn. His king goes there. I push another pawn because I can't think of anything else to do. He takes, I take. Okay, now, still, I'm in a good position, but it's his go, and he pushes his king forwards, and I retreat, okay, um, and we fanny about, and then we agree a draw. Now, let's look at the analysis on this, so from here, okay, now, e5 is a blunder, so I've gone from Totally winning, mate. You've got this, my son, right? Plus, I'm um, nine, minus nine, okay? To dead draw, okay? Why? Let's let's see. The best move was king here, 
right? I'm occupying, I'm controlling this square as well as this square, right? And now his king cannot come over here. And when his king can't, can't come over there, what's he gonna do, right? Now he's in Zugzwang. Pushes a pawn, loses it. Pushes a pawn, loses it. You know, all, all that one takes. Um, his king can't go there. If his king goes anywhere else, I take his pawn. Just a classic end game blunder, right? I've got 15 minutes on the bloody clock. I've got more time than I started with on the clock. And I just got too excited thinking, do you know what, I'm gonna make a video, right, for everyone on the channel about this anti-London because it's so cool. And I went and cocked up the game, but there you go. So that's it, that's it. Um, interesting anti-London with knight f6 <clears throat> here, okay. And if, if he plays London, that comes out, he doesn't know what to do. He's, already, he's, he's lost, yeah. Plays this, I take the pawn, best move. Blunder, minus four already, okay? This is interesting, and now it's a missed win. Totally, it's a missed win, right? Because e5 is best, this move. Bishop takes, queen out, thank you very much, I will have the bishop. So, there you go, guys. Um, if you hate the London as much as I do, yeah, then uh, give, it, give it a whiz, you know. Let me know, let me know what interesting traps and, and lines you find in it. And let's, let's, you know, let's join forces and take, let's storm London together. Rah, power to the people. All right then. So I'm going to update my notes right now uh, with this particular line because it's very, very fun. Um, other than that, let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching. See you later.